Hey everyone, I'm Rob Flattery from the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, also known as RIMCAD. Today we're going to teach you how to easily make your own video using Adobe Premiere Pro. This fun tutorial is being made on our Wondering Pixel. This workshop on wheels is dedicated to inspiring young creatives through art and design by scheduling visits to schools and events. In this series of online workshops, the Pixel shows artists just like you the fun, simple way of creating compelling content. So come on in. What's up everyone, we've got Chris Daly here from our marketing department and today he's going to show you how to use Adobe Premiere. We've got some footage for you to use and you, we're going to take you through the whole process of making a video from start to finish. The cool thing about you know any Adobe interface is you could actually adjust the sizing of everything as well. So we'll get into that but it's you know it makes it easier for the user depending on how they want to work. So within here we have our content. We have two photos of the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design campus. Then we have some video that I shot over the summer of different buildings. We also have some drone footage uh, that Rob had shot for us, which looks really pretty as well. So going through the content here, and I see that everything that we had in our folder from our desktop is here. So let's get started with the edit. So the first thing we want to do is create our sequence. Our sequence is where we are going to be editing from, and it's uh, where we're going to be building out our timeline. So in order to build our sequence, we want to go to File, New, Sequence. And we have all of these options here. We're going to just close that real quick and start from scratch. We're going to go to ABC HD, 1080p, and we're going to do 1080p 60. So what we're looking for here is the frame size, which is 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. We're also looking at the frame rate, which in this case is 59.94, also known as 60 frame rates per second. We want our pixel aspect ratio to be square at one, and we want it to be a progressive scan. So with all of those things in mind, we can label our sequence and we will call this main edit and click OK. Awesome. And as you see here, when we created it, it actually shows up right here. Now this is in our content folder, so it would make sense to also just do it from here as well to kind of keep it separated. But since we don't have too much content, it's fine to have it in this folder and we can always move it around. And as you see here, this is also where it's labeled. So what that did is it created this uh, this timeline right here, which shows all of our video channels and all of our audio channels. And I'm just going to uncheck these because the last project I had in here had a lot of audio. Um, and it created this window. And this is our edit window. So whatever we're editing is going to show up in here. Whereas when we click on our content, it's going to show up in here, which is called our source window. So our source window is where we're referencing our content as we pull it into our timeline. It's very important to, to know the difference between the two. We have our source window, and then we have our project window where our timeline is. And I could change the size of this, you know, because we are, you know, our main focus is the edit. We may want it to be the same size or bigger than our source window. It really depends on what your preference is. So one of the most important things to keep in mind is that editing works in layers, meaning whatever is on a video layer one. If there's something on top of it in video layer two, you won't be able to see it. So just keep that in mind as we start our editing process. To keep things simple for this tutorial, however, we are going to keep all of our edits on the same video channel just to break down the fundamentals. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our drone footage. Okay. And I'm just using the cursor here and I'm scanning through the footage here. And you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, why does this you know, kind of look pixelated or why doesn't it look as sharp when I'm scrolling through? Well, everyone's computer works differently, but I would suggest to have this uh, playback resolution be at a, the lowest resolution as possible. I can't remember if this was shot in 4K or if this was shot in full HD, but no matter what resolution it was shot in, the higher resolution it is, the longer it takes to load. And that lag during your editing process can really slow you up. So that's why I have mine set at a lower resolution because I know it's not going to impact the overall quality when we export the video. So I'm scrolling through here and I see, okay, so this is when the drone's taking off. We probably don't want to show that. Let's see where it starts moving. All right, here we go. 
Awesome. So right around here. And as you'll see, there's also a time code in the bottom left uh, that you can reference. But in order to get a section of this video into our timeline, we have to do something uh, called marking our in and our out point. Our in and our out allows us to take a section from our source window and place it into our timeline. So I'm going to click here. And this is highlighting this area. And then I'm, and then I'm going to scroll through. You could also just press spacebar and play and just kind of see where things look. This is really, you know, this is a really smooth shot. Great job, Rob. <laughs> um, so this, yeah, this looks good. And right after we lose the dome is where I want to stop. So like right here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click this bracket is O. And as you see, when I hover over these, there are actually little letters, which are keyboard shortcuts. And we're not going to get into keyboard shortcuts today, but something that I've been using since I started editing is using custom keyboard shortcuts to help speed up my editing process. But you can also do it with your mouse. So I'm going to click here and mark my out. Now our section is highlighted. We know what part of this entire video we want to bring into our timeline. We're going to click and hold on the actual window. And we're going to drag it over here. And then depending on the resolution that was shot, it'll say this clip does not match the sequence's settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. We're going to say keep existing settings. And the reason for that is that, you know, we just made a full HD window. This may have been shot in 4K. It may have been shot in 1280 by 720. Uh, it really depends. So we're going through here. Let's just play back real quick. This looks nice and smooth. And as you can see here in our timeline, we have a window here telling us how long this clip is or how long we are in the edit editing process. So it's a longer shot, but it's really nice, really smooth. So we're going to keep it. So we'll go to the end here. All right. Then we're going to get another shot. And it's important whenever you're editing to scrub through your entire timeline. I didn't do that for that first shot, but I'm going to do it for this next one of different shots of our Texas building. We have some pretty art on campus. We have our beautiful dome right in front of the Texas building. So there's a lot of really cool content here. I'm going to pull something a little bit different. I'm going to get this shot right here. So once again, I'm going to mark my in. I'm going to press play. All right, I'm going to mark my out. And as you can see, this is the timeline for the clip, but this is the timeline for what we highlighted. So this uh, two seconds and 19 frames is what is how long this duration is. If we were to use our arrow keys and bring it up a few and then click our out point again, we're a little bit over three seconds. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to click and drag this onto here. Okay. Now in this case, you could see, hey, this is way more scaled up than this. Well, why is that? Well, that's because this uh, video from our source window uh, was part of our virtual tour. I shot this in 4K, and we're working out of a 1920 by 1080 video. So in order to change that, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to click scale to frame size. And look at that. After one click of a button, our footage is scaled to its proper dimensions. And right down here, we had an audio channel pop up. Now we're not focusing on audio in this tutorial, so I'm going to actually unclick these and then delete that. But just know that when you do bring in clips, if there was any audio associated with the clip, that if you don't uncheck these, it will be brought in with it. Another question that people like to ask about editing is, well, isn't 4K just better? Why don't we edit out of a 4K sequence? Well, it's bigger, but it's not always necessary for a few reasons. For one, when you post online, despite the platform, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, what have you, those platforms compress the size of your video and the overall quality. No one likes it, but this is something if you follow different professional photographer, videographer pages, that's something that's very realistic. It's not as prominent on YouTube as it is in other platforms, but that's something to keep in mind. Also, with that becomes a bigger file size. And as a video editor, you're going to need to learn how to manage not just your system and your organization, but also your storage. So a 4K video isn't something that I would necessarily work on unless it was something I was presenting in person to be on a bigger screen. If this is something simply for your Instagram or social media 
or portfolio online, always stick with Full HD. Now, the benefit of scaling down a 4K video in an HD timeline is that when I go to, when I click on the clip and go to effect controls, I could say, oh wow, I could scale up. And scaling changes the size of the composition here. And better yet, it doesn't lose resolution or quality. Whereas if we, I'm pressing Command Z to go backwards, this is how it looks like already scaled up um, all the way. So if we scale in any more here, it's gonna look a little bit blurry as you could see. So we're gonna just Command Z there, scale to frame size again, delete our audio clip. So you could actually punch in if you want. And that brings me to my next point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale in this video just slightly with a subtle push. That's a cool effect that video editors love to use. So these are called keyframes. Keyframes are measuring the movement of something in a certain period of time, meaning we're starting at 100 here, which is really zero, right? And say I wanna bring it up to 110. You see how the video uh, just, uh, just grew? And as I move this keyframe, you could see, okay, within this three second clip, if I bring it here, it's gonna be a quick movement. Whereas if I bring it out a little bit longer throughout the, for the entire duration of the clip, it's more of a slower push. And that's what we wanna go for here. So another cool thing about keyframing is that you can also do the position. So you can do it on the X and the Y axis, depending on what, um, what you're trying to do. We're not doing that for this example here, but it's worth uh, sharing and showing. The most important thing about keyframes is to, is to remember to always make your mark. Uh, it, it's, the most important thing about keyframes is to always remember to make the keyframe for whatever movement you're trying to do. If I were to, I'm gonna just delete these. If I were to just click right here, punch in 110 again, there's no movement because I didn't make any keyframes. I just changed the overall scale of the video. So that's an important distinction to make. So we're gonna click Command Z. Awesome, so we have this cool little subtle push. Next, we're gonna to go to the Carpenter Building. This is also from our virtual tour. We have different angles of this building, looking for the right shot. So what we're gonna do here, I like this shot, so we're gonna click, oh. See, there was a little bit of a lag there, even with the resolution brought down. So we're gonna go back here. There we go. I'm gonna click in, then out, bring it down here. And then I wanna find another shot. But say I wanna go back to this shot or reference it, I'm gonna go back to where I started, right here. And I'm gonna click on this guy, add marker. And that leaves a little mark. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna find another shot of this building from a different angle, so let's do this one. I'm gonna click I, and I'm gonna click O right there. And actually going back to the I, I'm gonna click Add Marker again. So I'm making marks for the clips that I highlighted because I'm using more than one section from this entire video clip. And then I'm gonna bring this down here too. So as you can see, both of these shots right here from the same video are incredibly scaled up. So I'm gonna highlight both of them and I'm gonna right click and go to scale to frame size and look at that. So we have both of these. And next up, we're gonna go to photos. And believe it or not, I actually love editing photos in Adobe Premiere Pro and you're about to see why. So I'm gonna double click here and you know, this photo is clearly shot at a different perspective uh, than the 16 by nine dimensions, which is fine. That's how most uh, cameras work uh, for photography. So it's, since it's a photo, everything's the same here and it defaults to, it looks like it could go pretty long, um, but we're gonna just stay in here and it's already selected at almost five seconds. So I'm gonna make this two seconds gonna click out, 
you know what? Actually, let's make it three. There, and then I'm going to click on this window, and I'm going to drag it here. And something that I that's worth that's important and worth mentioning as well. Let me Command Z here. See this little magnet? This is a snap in timeline uh, tool. And what it's allowing me to do is when I bring my content over, it snaps to the actual timeline. So it stitches everything together and it makes it easier to work. If I didn't have that on, that little line wouldn't come here and there's a good chance I can overlap onto the clip from uh, before or after. And so uh, this is optional whether you want to have it on, whether you want to have it on or not, I prefer to have it on. So I'm gonna turn this on here. And our timeline's really growing, isn't it? So let me show you something real quick. This down here is a little scroll bar, and you can see that you can go really far in your edit. But what also this is used for is changing the size of your edit to see your clips. Something like this would be pretty difficult to work in because it's simply hard to see. So I'm gonna bring it to the left, and I'm gonna scale it up, and then I can really see my clips uh, really well and follow the time code as well, which is listed here, but also uh, here as well. So this photo, as you can see, was shot at a very high resolution. But when we try to scale to frame size, you see there, there are these black bars on the side. And we don't want that. So there are a few different ways of editing photos in video. But I'm going to show you this way first. We're going to first scale up our image. And from what we've learned already is that because it's shot at such a high resolution, we're not going to lose quality by scaling it up. Okay. So now by scaling it up a little bit and changing the position, we have a good framing of the water tower, the flowers. I mean, this is a beautiful photo. It's worth mentioning this was taken by our chair of photography and graphic design, Jim Ryman, is a, as you can tell, is a very skilled photographer. So we're going to scale this in a little bit more. I'm going to say 130. Okay, and I'm going to change the position ever so slightly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here with my position keyframe. I'm going to go down a little bit and I'm going to slightly move it up. It's always nice to have a little bit of subtle movement because it brings a little more dimension to your edits. And after I bring that to the end, I can kind of see what the movement looks like. If I brought it up too far, it could either go really fast or it'll show a black bar. We don't want that. We want this to be subtle. And this is within the two to three second clip that we picked from. We could always extend this clip out and then as you'll see, this will become longer. So if you wanted to make your clip five seconds instead, we're not gonna do that for this, but it's just worth sharing. So when I click here, slow movement. Pretty cool, right? So that's what this looks like with a little bit of movement in, uh, when it comes to photos. So the other way you can also edit photos, we're gonna go to our Campus Photo 2, and we're gonna say, all right, we want this for, let's do, do three seconds. I'm going to mark my out. Click here. So we're going to do the same thing as before. Scale to frame size. Now with that, you see these black bars again. But we're going to do something different with this particular photo. I'm going to hold down Option. And I'm going to hold down on my mouse and move this up. And what we're doing is we just made a duplicate of the same photo. And as I mentioned from the very beginning of this tutorial, video works in layers. So this duplicate is now on the second video layer channel, whereas the first photo that we reference is on video channel one. And when I, un when I click this eye, you can see nothing's different because these photos are the exact same in the, and they're in the exact same location. We haven't done anything to them yet. We're gonna actually scale this down, all right, to right there. Okay, and now when I unclick it, you see the first photo on the first video layer and then this top one that we just scaled down. And then our original photo, we're gonna take and scale up. Okay, we're gonna scale it up pretty big like this. Off to our right here, we have our effects window. And your effects can be used for so many different things, color correcting, color grading, uh, transitions. I mean, there's so many different options with effects, but another thing that you could also get out of your effects are finding different types of blurs. So we're going to look for a Gaussian blur and double click 
You could also drag it onto your clip, but I like to double click. And after I brought my effect here, it shows up in the effect controls over here. And you can see the type of uh, blurs that there are. We're going to leave it at horizontal and, ver and vertical. And you see the zero for blurriness. And what we're going to do actually is bring the blurriness up. You can see you can get, it can get really blurry. I mean, you can't even tell what that is. That's a little too blurry though. Similar to before, like we did with this, we want this to be subtle. So we're going to bring this down probably to, say like right here, 19. Okay. And then when we uncheck our top photo, you see, all right, there's a clear difference. You could tell it's the same photo, but you could, you could also tell that there's a clear difference between the two and they don't blend in too much together. If you ever want to uh, take the effect off, all you have to do is uncheck this effects and you can see what it looked like originally without having to delete it and reapply it. We're going to leave this clicked on. Okay. And we will unclick our top one for now. And I'm going to hold down shift and bring my mouse over. So it brings me to the very start of this clip and I'm going to click a keyframe here for scale and I'm going to go down a little bit and I'm going to bring this down to, let's say 187. Okay. We're going to bring this down here. So just looking now, it's, it's pulling out, right? Starting off at 192, goes down to 187. So it's five, uh, it's five tick marks away, which is pretty subtle for this short of a clip. If I were using a longer clip, I would, the difference between the numbers up here would be much bigger, but five works, right? And that's a subtle little, little touch. When I uncheck this top video layer and I click it, oh, cool. So you see this photo moving behind it, and this one's still obviously the focal point of the frame. Now, to bring it up a little bit more, we're going to click a keyframe on this top layer now, here. We're going to bring it up a few frames. We're going to just use our arrow keys, one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to bring this to the end. And what that's going to do is, we're scaling up our top image and then we're scaling back our bottom image. So what it's doing is creating almost like a separation between the two. Pretty cool, right? I like that. Now to add this, to add a little bit more separation between the two, we're actually going to add a drop shadow to this top image. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to select drop shadow. And you could see when I put that on, there's subtly something right here, but we're going to mess with these controls over here to make it a little easier to see. So I'm going to increase my distance to see, okay, there's the shadow. And we could change the opacity, it could be 100%, which is too much. You know, um, we want the shadow to, to help separate it, but we don't want it to, to be noticeable, if that makes sense. So we're going to go to softness and we're going to just and the softness actually creates a little blur to the shadow itself. And we'll increase the distance a little bit too. And we can also increase the um, opacity to see um, how transparent we want it to be as well. So with that, I'm able to have this image, have a drop shadow, move in while the same image is blurred out and zooming out on the backside. Now I'm going to change the distance here of this blur. I want it to be super subtle and that's starting to look good. So with that, we have almost 30 seconds of video. I'm going to go back one frame. We have almost 30 seconds of video. We have all of these different clips. Okay. And now as you can see, all of these clips are fairly short other than the drone footage one. I really like drone footage. So I think that's why it's so long. Um, but if we wanted to change this, what we could do is, bring it up to where we would want to start it. Let's say like right here, I'm going to click right here on the end of the clip and I'm going to bring it up. But if we do that, what we need to do is highlight everything and bring it back to the start. And then with that, you could see looking at, at our edit right here, we have some movement, some different shots, then some photos. 
awesome. And you know, that first shot, like I said, it was pretty long, which is why I shortened it. So I'm gonna go back one frame here, and I'm gonna click O for out, okay? And as you can see here, everything in this timeline is now highlighted. Now it's time to export. So I'm gonna go to File, Export, Media. More times than not, you're gonna be exporting in an H.264 high bitrate fashion. This is gonna make it so your phone could hold it if you wanted it to airdrop this or Dropbox this to your phone, or if you wanted to post this online without having to wait too long for it to publish. There are all these different options here. The other common option is using QuickTime, but then you're dealing with a bigger file size and you might not be able to have it on your phone or it might be too big to, to post on social media. So we're gonna stick with H.264 and we're gonna to stick to high bit rate. And then output name is main edit, which is what we named our timeline. And I can't emphasize enough how important organization is. I didn't mention this before, but every one of our clips from our content folder was also labeled. And it's so important to do that prior to editing because then you're able to stay more organized as you continue building out your timeline. I'm gonna click on main edit here. I'm gonna to go to where I'm gonna export it to. We'll save it and then we export. We have the project file on hand for you to download right now. Check out the link on our website or in the YouTube description to rewatch and follow along. Thanks for watching.